let's go back to old Babylon because you, you call the city or you refer to the city of Babylon yep. as the most famous, most notorious, most splendid, most excoriated, <laughs> most admired, most vilified city in antiquity. Yes. So I, I suppose the question is, was that reputation justified? No. It just came to represent everything that uh, anybody wanted to represent. And uh, let's put it this way. It was the place where in, in around 1800 uh, BCE, it all came together. All that history of Mesopotamia came together in its first huge flourishing. And because of um, the, the vagaries of geological and weather history, unfortunately, that moment in Babylon's long and great history has been lost to us because the water table has risen so high that although the monuments brought back to Europe from Babylon are spectacular, those which sit in the Pergamum Museum in Berlin, if anybody has access to Berlin and mm. is interested in the subject, they really must go there, walk down the processional way which Nebuchadnezzar walked down, go through the ceremonial Ishtar Gate, through which the priests uh, marched and chanted on high days and holidays. It's the most fantastic experience. Mm. But that comes from so late in the uh, city's history that, as I say in the book, it's hardly much earlier than the buildings on the Parthenon in Athens, uh, on the Acropolis in Athens. So we don't have records. We don't have an archaeological record mm. of what Babylon was in its heyday. But it was from its founding under the ancestors of, um, of Hammurabi, the famous lawgiver, the, the guy who wrote the famous eye for an eye tooth for a tooth law code, around, as I say, 1800-ish BCE. That's when everything in southern Mesopotamia for the first time comes together and shows what a spectacular and glorious thing a world city can be. And we must call Babylon, in that sense, the greatest world city, because everybody who was familiar with the international environment in those days, and although so many people were peasants living on the land who didn't even know anything about the, uh, the village next door, urbanites and anybody who knew anything about what was going on in the world, oh, as far as, well, certainly Greece, the pre-Helladic Greece, the, mm. the Mycenaeans and so on, mm. already knew about Babylon. Points further west knew about Babylon. All Anatolia knew about Babylon. It was known in Arabia. It was known further east in uh, in northern India. It, it was already famous in its own day mm. as the greatest world city. It would be taken over eventually simply in terms of fame, by the Assyrian cities, um, yeah. in particular Nineveh, which also had... But Nineveh was always was no, well known as the seat of, a great, of the greatest power of the age, in the way that Washington, D.C. is known as the uh, seat of government of the greatest power of our age, yeah. whereas Babylon was the New York. <laughs> Paul Krivacek. Babylon, Mesopotamia, and the birth of civilization is available now in hardback. You can find out more details on the website at blackwell.co.uk. You'll also find an archive of over 100 author interviews there. I'll be back soon with another podcast, and until then, thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.